Here at Learn Green, we believe that for the foreseeable future, climate change and its impact on communities will be the greatest challenges society will face. As such, we're doing our part to contribute. Our innovation, Learn Green, seeks to address the gap in environmental literacy among the youth and shift the mainstream consumption of environmental news away from social media through our mobile app platform. Our solution will be multifaceted. First, through our app, we will provide bite-sized educational modules that cater to students. They're filled with information that contains environmental policies, science, and more. As you can see, the condensed information and comprehensive photos allow for easy digestion of materials. In addition, we inform users about current news sourced from a variety of providers, allowing for diverse perspectives. We also connect users to local and national nonprofits and events. Not Yet Design is our tab to educate users on the environmental platforms of local, state, and national politicians in order for our users to be more politically informed and active. Lastly, we gamify the experience through rewards, awards, and friendly competition, incentivizing students to continue learning. We hope to make lasting change in our communities, paving the way for a planet that can be enjoyed not only by our generation, but all those generations yet to come. Okay, excellent. And you have three minutes and 20 seconds to make some supplementary remarks. So whenever you're ready. One hour. That's the amount of time the average student learns about climate change each year in America. One single hour. The UN recently reported that we have less than 10 years to stop climate change from having irreversible catastrophic effects on our planet. And so why is nobody in our generation learning about the next biggest crisis that is predicted to displace 1 billion people by 2050? For a country that has always been a global leader in environmental work and a pivotal figure in the international effort to combat climate change, it's shocking that 40% of Americans don't think that climate change is a threat, one of the highest rates in the world. With the lack of quality environmental education within schools, many Americans instead obtain their environmental knowledge through social media and news outlets platforms that currently suffer from unprecedented rates of misinformation and disinformation campaigns by malicious actors such as the fossil fuel industry. And so today, we're here to answer a single question. How do we equip the next generation of American leaders with the necessary tools to solve the impending climate crisis? Well, on a fundamental level, Learn Green realizes that the first step to solving a problem is recognizing that it exists. We need to understand the problem, what the problem is, before we try to attempt to solve it. And that's what precisely Learn Green does. We equip the next generation of leaders with the necessary information to tackle environmental problems, resource consumption, air pollution, and most importantly of all, climate change. But uniquely, Learn Green is specifically designed with three distinct characteristics that allow it to succeed. First, Learn Green is objectively educational using peer-reviewed, fact-checked studies and articles to inform environmental news and lessons. Second, Learn Green is connected, bringing together a diverse group of like-minded individuals and organizations by encouraging users to engage with local and environmental initiatives and nonprofits. And third, Learn Green is self-financing, utilizing mutually beneficial partnerships with eco-friendly companies such as Patagonia and Sierra Club to sustain operations, supply user rewards, and aid with event organization. But most importantly of all, Learn Green gives students an incentive to learn. When users demonstrate material comprehension of environmental lessons, they can cash in their earned acorn points to plant a tree, donate to environmental nonprofits, or even purchase eco-friendly products. In that case, Learn Green empowers users to realize that even at a young age, they can make a change. And so it's crucial for us to understand that our generation stands at the crux of a world-changing event. It's time for us to do our part. So join us and learn green.
Thank you. Thank you, Learn Green. All right, we now have some time for the judges to provide feedback. Judges, I'll remind you to please use the raise hand feature when you would like to speak. And I see Jason's hand is up, so you go right ahead, Jason. All right, hi, uh, Team Learn Green. I really like your idea, and the fact that you already have a functioning AI interface is awesome. I was really impressed by that. Uh, I'm wondering, could you elaborate on how your partnerships will work to financially sustain your business and how you're going to attract these partners? Hello. Um, so initially, we'll probably apply for environmental grants and awards like the Google Global Impact Awards, the Rockefeller Foundation, whatnot to fund initial operations. As we expand by partnering with similarly minded eco-friendly companies, as we said, Patagonia and Sierra Club, not only do they get a chance to advertise their operation, their brands, their products, they have a chance to increase their user base, whether it's through consumers, whether through volunteers. And in turn, we get rewards we get to supply user rewards like gift cards and organize community events in partnerships with these corporations and organizations. So it's a mutually beneficial as we see partnership and that will definitely help us spearhead this movement. Zach. Hello. First of all, yeah, I think that video was really slick. I loved being able to see the uh, the app sort of like in operation. That's it. That was great. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the process by which those short condensed bits of information would be generated. How do you see um, that process? Um, you know, how, how's that, how does that material end up on your app, I guess? Go for it, Joseph. It's totally fine. <laughs> so currently, our model is uh, by our educational team to create these modules. Now, with each update, we inform, we update each module, whether it's with new new ones or updating old ones with new information found in uh, recent studies and articles, whatnot. So currently, it's generated by our team. Uh, of course, we're going to have uh, an option for. Um, users to fact check to question our material, which will diligently uh, review and check for accuracy in material. So that's currently our module or our model for uh, inputting educational modules. And Maddie. Hi, Learn Green. I love the idea and I love how easily accessible the app would be. Can you just talk about how often you would update the app and just the information on it and the opportunities to get involved. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that the educational modules will constantly be updated given that there are new topics that are constantly arising um, and new environmental issues that are constantly arising throughout this like every single day. Um, and so it's our job to stay on top of those issues. In terms of the news, of course, the news cycle changes each day, but our, in, our algorithm specifically makes sure that the news that is being um, shown on the platform is um, like objectively credible as well as like evidence-based. And so that will be also be constantly changing each day in line um, with like the sources that we're pulling from um, that update again with the environmental issues that pertain to our generation. Klaus. Hi guys. Hey, great concept. I, I particularly like uh, the, your efforts to move people towards action and activism. I think that's such an important part. Can you tell us a little bit more about just how you plan on attracting users who, you know, and, and, and the target audience? So initially, I think with our generation, a popular way to establish, um, I guess not credibility, but popularity with an app is through social media. So partnering with student organizations around the country, whether it's school-based, city-based, locally-based, nationally-based, we will uh, advertise our platform. Since it's a more user reward platform rather than a uh, user pay platform, there's a lot of incentive for students uh, to utilize our app. Um, and currently with interviewing students in our campus, and in high schools in our local hometowns, we see that there is a lot of interest uh, for students to gain environmental education away from platforms such as uh, current news media, which is hard to say uh, is evidence-based or biased, it's hard to tell. 
and they wanted to stray away from social media, which is more so an echo chamber of misinformation and purposeful disinformation. So there's already a lot of interest by our peers in having a platform that has environmental education and literacy. So through that, uh, we, we hope that it's already enough to gain an attractive user base, which the Gamify experience with uh, competing with friends locally and nationally would help uh, just propagate that user growth. In addition, I would also add that while social media has the a great potential for misinformation, it is also a very useful tool. And so in that case, we would also ensure that for people who refer their friends or anybody else to use this app, they will also get more Acorn points that they can also use um, to buy eco-friendly products and all these other different initiatives. Um, in that case, like it, it is like a um, cascading effect in that case. And Masami, and just so you know, we have about, um, we have four minutes left. Well, first to echo my colleagues, that was a really great idea and you guys presented it pretty incredibly. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak more to knowing that this is kind of an app that targets youth. So really anyone between the ages of even six to 22, um, how might you kind of ensure that the experience can be tailored to these different age groups from someone who's in elementary school versus someone who might be in high school? Yeah, I can take this one. So I would say that for example, the educational modules, it will actually be like for one topic, there might be multiple different types of the topic um, with varying levels of difficulty and comprehension. So for example, if we're talking about climate change, sorry, though my lights are automatic. Um, for example, um, on climate change, you would see that in an educational, like in primary school, for example, it'd be very basic using very little terminology. But as you go up, you'll, you will see more statistics, more evidence, and more comprehensive material understanding. Um, that, that way it ensures that people are, are getting like the, the difficulty and the, uh, the comprehension they need for their specific like uh, grade level. All right, and um, Klaus, did you have your hand up again or is that just still from before? I think that's from before. <laughs> okay, uh, Kendra. Um, yeah, this is an incredible project. Um, I absolutely love it. I think that you guys have thought about so many different pieces regarding gamification and different ways to get it out there and get people excited about it. Um, I was wondering if you could say anything about the competition, about other, if there are other platforms that are doing this, other apps that are trying to do this, um, if you've learned anything about that. Yeah. Oh, oh, go for it. <laughs> I, like um, I was actually working with a nonprofit to scour the current state of environmental literacy in America. And currently, the platforms for environmental education are specifically catered for extremely young students and toddlers between the ages three and six. For ages between six and let's say even college level, there is a lack. This is a gap of environmental education that we're hoping to fill. Uh, there are other similar educational um, models that different organizations use, like the footprint calculator, but those don't cater to environmental education. Instead, they are arguably uh, gaslighting um, regular um, users to thinking that the environmental crisis is solely on the consumer problem, but truly it's a really polemical topic when we look at environmental education, especially with 19 uh, the mid-1900s attack on the climate crisis by industry, and we see that a uh, cascading effect still with environmental ed education, the lack of, and the purposeful disinformation still that exists on the web. In addition, I would also add that this is the only app that we've seen on the market so far, or even in existence, or it, like being talked about that has three unique sections. The first is like the news, then we have the education and, the, and then the activism. And so those three things uniquely all in one app is really critical for building like a truly, um, a truly environmental like literate youth. Um, and that uniquely separates it from like one, another app, which might only talk about the news, for example, and doesn't give people the platform to actually engage in their local communities to you know, encourage for more environmental activism. 